What were the events that led to the longest war in American history? Our story begins in Afghanistan, a country known for its rugged mountains and rich cultural heritage. However, by the late 20th century, it had become a battleground for power, gripped by civil unrest. The Taliban, an Islamic fundamentalist group, seized control in the mid-90s, introducing a strict interpretation of Islamic law that was especially oppressive towards women. They destroyed ancient artifacts and monuments, branding them un-Islamic, and their regime was recognized by just three countries, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. Meanwhile, halfway across the world, the United States enjoyed a period of relative peace. But it was a peace that would be shattered by the horrific events of September 11, 2001. On that fateful day, 19 militants associated with the extremist group Al-Qaeda hijacked four airplanes and carried out suicide attacks against targets in the United States. Two of the planes were flown into the twin towers of the World Trade Center in New York City. A third plane hit the Pentagon just outside Washington, D.C., and the fourth plane crashed in a field in Pennsylvania. Almost 3,000 people were killed during these attacks, making it the deadliest incident for firefighters and law enforcement officers in the history of the United States, with 343 and 72 killed, respectively. The September 11th attacks were a turning point, not only for the United States, but for the world. The Taliban, who had given sanctuary to Al-Qaeda, immediately became the target of U.S. wrath. Despite ultimatums from the U.S. government demanding that the Taliban turn over Al-Qaeda leaders, they refused. The stage was set for a confrontation of epic proportions. The world watched in anticipation and fear as the United States, still reeling from the attacks, rallied its allies. There was a sense of inevitability, a sense of dread, but also a sense of justice that needed to be served. With a heavy heart and a call for justice, the United States prepared for war. On October 7, 2001, the first bombs fell on Afghanistan. Thus began a conflict that would span two decades, dubbed America's Longest War. In the wake of the September 11th attacks, an international coalition led by the United States initiated a military campaign against the Taliban regime that harbored the Al-Qaeda terrorists responsible for the attacks. The early stages of the war were marked by swift and decisive action. The military strategy was clear, dismantle the Taliban regime, eradicate Al-Qaeda, and establish a democratic government in Afghanistan. Coalition forces bolstered by local Afghan allies launched a series of air and ground operations across the country. Their target? Taliban strongholds and Al-Qaeda training camps. By mid-November, the Taliban's grip on power was loosening. Major cities like Mazar-e-Sharif and Kabul fell to the coalition, signaling a turning point in the conflict. The Taliban regime, once an unchallenged authority, was crumbling under the weight of the international onslaught. By December, the Taliban had been effectively ousted from power. The Bonn Agreement, signed on December 5, 2001, laid the foundation for a new democratic government in Afghanistan. The country, it seemed, was on the path to peace and stability, but the victory was bittersweet. Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden had slipped through the coalition's grasp, escaping to neighboring Pakistan, and while the Taliban regime had been toppled, its fighters had not been entirely vanquished. They retreated to the rural and mountainous regions of the country, regrouping and preparing for a new kind of war. The Taliban regime had fallen, yet the war was far from over. The stage was set for an insurgency that would plunge Afghanistan back into chaos and conflict for many more years to come. As the Taliban regrouped, a new chapter of the war began. Far from being a defeated force, the Taliban adapted to the new dynamics of the conflict, sowing the seeds of a relentless insurgency. They capitalized on local grievances, exploited tribal politics, and leveraged their deep understanding of the rugged Afghan terrain to wage a campaign of guerrilla warfare against the international coalition and the fledgling Afghan government. This was not a conventional war anymore, it was a shadowy, fluid conflict, where the front lines were blurred and the enemy was elusive. The war had transformed into a grueling stalemate, a tug of war that neither side seemed capable of winning. The international coalition and Afghan forces controlled the cities and major towns during the day, but at night, the Taliban ruled, especially in the rural areas and the rugged mountainous regions. As the conflict dragged on, the impact on Afghan civilians was devastating. 
The numbers are heart-wrenching, an estimated 176,000 to 212,000 casualties, including over 46,000 civilians. The war had also caused a significant displacement of Afghan refugees, disrupting lives and shattering families. The Taliban's insurgency was not just a military strategy, they aimed to wear down their opponents, to drain their resources and dampen their resolve. They wanted to create a sense of inevitability about their eventual return to power, to make it seem as if all the sacrifices, all the blood and treasure spent, were in vain. As the years rolled on, despite the surge of international troops, despite the billions of dollars poured into the war effort, the stalemate continued. The insurgency persisted, the violence escalated, and the civilian casualties mounted. The war had become a grim cycle of violence and retaliation, a carousel of conflict that seemed to have no end. And so, the war continued year after year, with no clear end in sight. The international coalition and the Afghan government were stuck in a quagmire, a conflict they seemed unable to win, but also unable to extricate themselves from. In a war of attrition, no victory was in sight. The stage was set for a long, drawn-out conflict, a conflict that would shape the future of Afghanistan in ways no one could have imagined. Efforts to end the war through diplomacy began, but would they succeed? As the conflict stretched into its second decade, the international community sought to bring an end to the war not through force, but through dialogue and negotiation. The United States, spearheading these diplomatic efforts, began to engage in peace talks with the Taliban. This marked a significant shift in strategy, as the Taliban were no longer being viewed solely as adversaries, but potential partners in establishing peace. These negotiations were not without their challenges. Trust was scarce, and the stakes were high. The world watched with bated breath, hopeful yet skeptical. In 2020, after months of meticulous negotiations, an unprecedented event took place. The United States and the Taliban reached an agreement, a deal that was seen as the first major step towards concluding the two-decade-long conflict. The terms of the deal included the withdrawal of U.S. troops and the Taliban's commitment to prevent any group or individual, including Al-Qaeda, from using Afghan soil to threaten the security of the United States and its allies. Yet with the ink barely dry on the agreement, questions and concerns began to surface. Was the Taliban genuinely committed to peace, or was this merely a strategic move to regain power? And what would happen to the democratic government that had been painstakingly established over the past 20 years? The deal was a significant milestone, no doubt. It was a testament to the power of diplomacy and negotiation. However, it was also a leap of faith. A gamble, some might say. Only time would tell if this bet would pay off or if it would plunge Afghanistan back into the throes of chaos and violence. A deal had been struck, yet the future remained uncertain. After all, peace is not merely the absence of war but the presence of justice, security, and sustainable development. The road to such a peace in Afghanistan, it seemed, was still a long and winding one. In 2021, after 20 years of war, the U.S. made the decision to withdraw. This move was not sudden or impulsive. It was in fact a calculated response shaped by two decades of conflict, thousands of lives lost, and a price tag running into trillions of dollars. The U.S. had initially entered Afghanistan with a mission to dismantle the Taliban regime and establish a democratic government. But over time, the focus shifted. The prolonged conflict no longer aligned with current foreign policy priorities. President Joe Biden stood by the decision, acknowledging the swift collapse of the Afghan government but emphasizing the need to end America's longest war. The decision sparked a myriad of reactions within the U.S., from relief to concern and everything in between. There was a palpable sense of apprehension about what the withdrawal would mean for the people of Afghanistan, and those fears were not unfounded. The withdrawal of U.S. troops left a power vacuum that was swiftly filled by the Taliban. The Afghan government, despite years of support and training, was unable to withstand the onslaught. Cities fell like dominoes, culminating in the fall of the capital, Kabul, in August 2021. The impact on the Afghan people was immediate and profound. Lives were upended. Fear and uncertainty became constant companions. Women in particular faced the grim prospect of losing hard-won freedoms. The international community looked on, concerned about the future of Afghanistan under Taliban rule. The decision to withdraw U.S. troops from Afghanistan was a pivotal moment, marking the end of an era and the beginning of a new chapter. As the last U.S. troops left Afghanistan, a new era began. In a matter of weeks, the Taliban had regained control of Afghanistan, 
The speed at which this occurred sent shockwaves around the globe. The Taliban, once a regime dismantled by an international coalition, had been reborn, more powerful and more determined than ever before. Their resurgence was swift and decisive. Kabul, the country's capital, fell into their hands in August 2021. The Afghan government, which had been established and supported by the international coalition, crumbled under the pressure. The Taliban's return marked a drastic shift in power, marking the end of a two-decade-long international intervention in Afghanistan. The international community reacted with a mixture of shock, disbelief, and concern. The fall of Kabul was a stark reminder of the volatile nature of the region and the persistent influence of the Taliban. Many questioned the effectiveness of the international intervention and the decision to withdraw troops, which had seemingly paved the way for the Taliban's return. President Joe Biden, despite acknowledging the swift collapse of the Afghan government, stood firm on his decision to end the prolonged conflict. He pledged to continue diplomatic and humanitarian efforts in Afghanistan, though the absence of U.S. forces raised concerns about the potential for increased violence and instability. Amid the chaos, fears mounted for the future of Afghanistan under the Taliban's rule, concerns about the preservation of women's rights, the potential for a resurgence of terrorism, and the fate of those who had opposed the Taliban were all prevalent. The international community, including the United Nations, called for the preservation of human rights in Afghanistan, but the future remained uncertain. In the wake of the Taliban's return, many Afghans faced danger and uncertainty, with limited options for escape. Scenes of chaos unfolded at Kabul's airport as desperate Afghans sought a way out, a stark testament to the fear and uncertainty instilled by the Taliban's return. The world watched in disbelief as the Taliban returned to power. The swift takeover served as a stark reminder of the complex and volatile nature of global politics and the enduring influence of extremist groups like the Taliban. It marked a new chapter in Afghanistan's history, one that is yet to fully unfold. What did the Taliban's return mean for the women of Afghanistan? The answer to this question is as complex as it is disheartening. With the fall of Kabul in August 2021, the Taliban's resurgence spelled an immediate and drastic change for Afghanistan's women. Under the previous regime, women had begun to enjoy freedoms and opportunities that were unthinkable during the Taliban's first reign. They attended schools, held public office, and worked in various professions. But with the Taliban back in control, these hard-won rights and freedoms were instantly under threat. The fear among women was palpable. The Taliban, notorious for their oppressive restrictions on women's rights, were back at the helm. And despite their promises of an inclusive Islamic government, these fears were not unfounded. Reports began to emerge from areas under Taliban control, pointing to a grim reality. Women's access to health care and education was being restricted, and targeted killings of women and activists were on the rise. Take, for instance, the tragic case of Najia, a mother in northern Afghanistan. When Taliban fighters demanded she cook for them, she refused. They returned to her home three more times and on the fourth visit, they killed her. Najia's story is a chilling illustration of the danger that women in Afghanistan face under the Taliban rule. As the international community watches and calls for the preservation of women's rights in Afghanistan, the situation on the ground remains uncertain. Many women are scrambling to comply with Taliban rules such as wearing burqas, while others are seeking ways to escape the country. The struggle for women's rights in Afghanistan continues. And while the future may seem uncertain, the courage and resilience of Afghanistan's women endure. Their fight for equality, freedom and dignity is a testament to their indomitable spirit in the face of adversity. What is the legacy of the war in Afghanistan? The war in Afghanistan, the longest war in American history, spanning two decades from 2001 to 2021, has left indelible marks on Afghanistan, the United States and the world. The legacy of this conflict is vast and complex, encompassing human lives, financial costs, and geopolitical shifts. The human toll of the war is staggering. An estimated 176,000 to over 212,000 casualties were reported, including over 46,000 civilians. The war also resulted in significant displacement of Afghan refugees, creating a humanitarian crisis that continues to unfold. The financial cost of the war is equally immense. The United States alone spent over $2 trillion on the conflict, a vast expenditure that has had profound implications for American domestic and foreign policy. This financial burden, combined with the loss of over 2,300 American troops, has led to widespread questioning of the war's value and purpose. 
Beyond the borders of Afghanistan and the United States, the war has reshaped the global landscape. It has altered alliances, strained international relations, and changed the dynamics of global terrorism. The rapid return of the Taliban following the U.S. withdrawal has prompted a reassessment of counter-terrorism strategies and raised concerns about the potential resurgence of extremist groups. The war's legacy also extends to the Afghan people, particularly women, who now face an uncertain future under the Taliban's rule. The hard-won gains in women's rights and freedoms are at risk of being rolled back, casting a shadow over the country's social and cultural fabric. In the U.S., the war has left a generation of veterans grappling with the physical and psychological scars of combat, sparking a renewed focus on the care and support of military personnel returning from war zones. The war in Afghanistan leaves a legacy that will be remembered for generations to come. As we reflect on this legacy, we are reminded of the complexities of war and the profound impact it has on nations and individuals alike. This war, like all wars, serves as a stark reminder of the cost of conflict and the enduring struggle for peace. What can we learn from the war in Afghanistan? As we venture into the final stage of our journey, let's pause and reflect on the lessons etched in the annals of history by the war in Afghanistan. The war, spanning two decades, was more than just a military conflict. It was a complex and intricate tapestry of political maneuvers, socio-cultural dynamics, and human resilience. The challenges of nation-building, particularly in a region steeped in traditional customs and tribal allegiances, were starkly evident. The goal of establishing a democratic government in Afghanistan was met with resistance and complexities at every turn. The struggle revealed that nation-building is no easy task and requires a nuanced understanding of the local culture, history, and socio-political landscape. Peace negotiations, too, were a labyrinth of intricacies. The diplomatic dance between the U.S., the Afghan government, and the Taliban was laced with mistrust and divergent objectives. It underscored the fact that achieving lasting peace often requires more than just a shared desire to end conflict. It requires mutual respect, understanding, and compromise, elements that were sorely lacking in this scenario. But perhaps the most poignant lesson comes from the human cost of conflict. Lives lost, families torn apart, and a generation of children growing up in the shadow of war. The estimated casualties, including over 46,000 civilians, are a grim reminder of the devastating impact of war. These numbers represent more than just statistics. They are fathers, mothers, children, ordinary people caught in the crossfire of geopolitical ambitions. The plight of women in particular is a chilling testament to the far-reaching effects of conflict. The fear of a return to oppressive restrictions on women's rights highlights the importance of safeguarding fundamental human freedoms, even amidst turmoil. The war in Afghanistan, like all wars, leaves behind a legacy of pain, resilience, and lessons to be learned. It's a stark reminder of the complexities of global politics, the fragility of peace, and the enduring human spirit. As we reflect on the war in Afghanistan, let us strive to learn from our past. As we come to the end of our journey through the war in Afghanistan, we must not forget. We've traversed the tumultuous 20 years of this conflict, from the initial response to the September 11th attacks to the United States withdrawal and the subsequent return of the Taliban. This war was not just about politics, strategies, and territorial control. It was a human story, a tale of lives lost, dreams shattered, and societies disrupted. The estimated number of casualties, ranging from 176,000 to over 212,000, is a somber reminder of the war's devastating impact. We've also seen how the war shaped the lives of Afghan women, who faced daunting challenges and oppressive restrictions. Despite the Taliban's promise of an inclusive Islamic government, the future of women's freedoms remains uncertain. The international community is called to preserve women's rights in Afghanistan, a task that requires continuous attention and commitment. The war in Afghanistan also leaves a legacy of lessons. It serves as a testament to the complexities of foreign interventions, the limitations of military power, and the necessity of diplomatic solutions. The prolonged conflict, despite the massive costs involved, did not align with the evolving foreign policy priorities, leading to the difficult decision to withdraw. Remembering this war is not just about understanding history, it's about learning from it about making sense of the world we live in today, and about shaping a better tomorrow. As we continue to grapple with the war's ramifications, let's keep the conversation going, for it is in dialogue that we find understanding and ultimately peace.
Thank you for joining us on this journey. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, History Facts, for more videos like this.